Hello, hello. Um, ben here, coming to you from New York City with, um, oh, God, I think it's part six of my mini album tutorial. Um, it's hard to remember how many parts I've done, but today we're going to be making page five. And um, what I want to do today is uh, make a page. Um, it's a Kathy Orta ish page uh, from her All Occasions, which is a pretty popular uh, format online. And basically, this is sort of the basic um, All Occasion style where you've got this little side over here with a pullout photo mat and then a side pocket there and a belly band. We're going to do pretty much the same thing, but the one thing I'm going to do on this one is turn this side pocket flap into a fold out and have a, a pocket underneath. Okay, so we're basically going to be making this page. This is from my last mini album that I shared. Um, so um, it's a little bit different size. This is 8x10. We're going to be doing this on an 8x8, but the principle is the same. So I just wanted to show you the example. So um, I think you can kind of see here already, this is probably the most complicated page. I mean, look, this is the list of cutting for the page three. That's for page one. And then you can tell already, I mean, for page five, it's, um, you know, it, it, it's complicated. or uh, You know, the most complicated I've done so far. And I wanted to show you in, the, in person, too, from my last book, because the way I drew it, it's not very great. Uh, Photomet insert, uh, that's going to be trifold. I want to do a magnet closure to keep that flap down. Um, there's going to be a belly band on the front, a big pocket on the page, um, and I'm calling this... Uh, Kathy Orta All Occasion Style with a twist. Um, so basically, here's all the cardstock you need to cut. Cardstock 6x8, um, a 5x8 for the pocket flap base, 5x8.5 for the pocket flap top, an inch and a half by 5 for the belly band, the trifold photo mat insert will be 105 by 7 and 3 quarters, and uh, also, six die cut labels um, on a cardstock. I basically um, cut those using this Tim Holtz label die. So we'll need six of those. Or just six sort of labels. I cut them in cream colored cardstock. Then for the decorative paper, the base uh, will be three by seven and seven eighths. The pocket will be five and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths. The front, front and back of the flip over will be three and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths. The belly band will be one and three eighths by three and seven eighths. Um, the insert mats, so the tr it's a trifold um, mat, so we're going to need six uh, of the p pieces of paper to line both sides of all the uh, trifold. So three and three eighths by six and three quarters. And the reason I do six, oh, I'll show you later. We make it a little bit short so we can have labels at the bottom. Um, I On my last album, if you watch the video, you notice that on the first mat, let me just pull it out. I accidentally cut the papers too short. And then I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna put a label there so you can caption it. So that's what we're gonna do. And that's why I had you cut out six labels with this die. This is a Tim Holtz tag. It came in a tag uh, die set from Sizzix. Um, and finally, I've got, I kind of had to squeeze it in at the bottom. There's going to be a little stopper on the bottom of the front page. So there's going to, it's a piece of chipboard to cut at one and a half by two. And then you're going to cut a piece of deco paper the exact same size. So I've already done all this cutting. So Let's just kind of go in order. This is the page base. Uh-oh. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot to glue this side down when I was making them. Okay, let me just grab another page base then. And hopefully I remembered to actually glue both sides of this one. Okay, I did. Thank, good. Thank goodness. Okay, so here we go. We're on here. The first thing that's going to glue be glued down is this um, flap base. So the flap base is a piece of cardstock that's eight by five. 
you're gonna score it at one inch um, on the short side, okay? And when I say score on the short side, what I mean is when you put in your scoreboard, you're gonna line up the short side along the top and then score at one inch, okay? So, and then I do the thing where I kind of cut into the sides a little bit. So then I make this will be the flap. We're gonna glue this flap down here and this is gonna be what flips over, okay? I also took a circle punch. Um, I just used a one inch circle punch from EK Success and just punched in a half circle at the top. This will just help the pull out the uh, photo mat from the top when you're done. So we're gonna glue that here. Then we're going to take the piece that's eight and a half by five. This is the flap top. And then we're gonna score this at one half inch on each short side, and then a half inch on one long side. So basically then we've got both of these sides scored at a half inch and this one. And we're gonna fold this under and glue it down on top of this flap. So basically we're making a very large pocket right here to put in this large photo mat that we're making. Okay. And this will be glued down here too. So this whole thing is going to flip open. Okay. So that's the flip. We're also then on the base page going to take this eight by six large pocket and just adhere it right here on three sides to make a large pocket uh, in on the side. You'll notice here too, I've got this X here. I have another X on the base flap right here because that is where our magnet's gonna need to be. And I put an X there so I remember when I start putting my decorative paper down, not to put it down yet until I get the magnet on there, okay? So let's go ahead and start um, first, I'm just going to pop this down. Aileen's uh, tacky quick dry. Um, and I want to, yeah. So we're just going to do a thin line on three sides. And just clear that down. Pick that up and just make sure that I'm perfect. There we go. Okay. So that's easy, right? There we go. Oh, and you know what? Oh, see. I'm not going to edit this out because this is this happens all the time and I want you to know it's okay. Maybe it happens to you all the time. Maybe you're a little more perfect than I am. I can't put this down first. Ugh. So I forgot. What I need to put down is this. And then my piece of deco paper here that goes there and then I can put the pocket down because I need that backing to look nice. Okay. So, see, you're really getting the full, uh, you know, crazy experience here. So let me do that. There's wet glue on all of this now. What a mess. Um, so now I'm going to take, this is the real order, folks. Uh, the eight and a half inch flat bat, a uh, flap base that you have scored at one inch and we're going to just going to put plenty of glue there and I'm just going to glue this down right there and before I really stick it to I'm going to just fold it like this because that's really what you want to make sure that you when it closes you've got these even sides up at the top and the bottom okay so we do that then when I um, was doing my deco paper that very first piece of deco paper and I and I knew this when I was writing this down I just forgot it 
the first piece of deco paper we're going to need is this three by seven and seven eighths piece. And that's this piece. I've already inked up my edges. Um, and then we're just going to put this down right here. Okay. So I'm going to use my ATG for this one. My rule of thumb is I use the ATG when there's not going to be any force applied to the adhesive. So this tab, putting this down, I use wet glue because, you know, this is going to open and fold and there's going to be some force applied to this. It needs to be super strong. Well, this is, there's not going to be any force on this at all. So uh, let me just pop this down because this is just flat. Decorative. It's not really functional. Okay, so now, now we can put this down, right? Okay, it's gonna need some new glue, so let me put some more glue down. Okay, mistakes and all, I'm keeping them in for you. Okay, now, we can do what we meant to do at the beginning. Okay. You know what? I'm glad I noticed that before that glue dried. Okay. There we go. See, that's a, one of the things that does get a little intense is just knowing the order that you have to do it. I had to put this down first because I wanted to hide the seam of that flap. Then I have to put the deco paper, then put the pocket on, right? So. Oh well. But, you know, I noticed it early enough, so that's good. So there we are right now. Now, we're to the point where, um, I think I want to go ahead and do the magnet, okay? So I've got these two X's here. So, um, I have these, um, magnets. I got them on Amazon. They came in this little box. Um, you know, I don't know if this will help you, but that is the, uh, description there. They're very tiny. Um, here, I'll just, I'll show it to you. Can you see? They're super, super tiny. Um, I'm sure they look even smaller because my hands are really big, but I'm going to take off two of them. These happen to be square, um, which you don't see that often, but I mean, it really doesn't matter. They're extremely strong though. So what I'm going to do is just pull one of these off and then I'm going to put the other one like over to the side because it's going to pull. So let me show you my method to this. And it's a little, a little bit crazy um, or weird, I guess. I kind of just made it up as I was going along a while ago. Um, so here we go. I'm going to take... A piece of half inch score tape um, just a small piece and you know I'm gonna want this flap to close here so actually I think that X is a pretty good spot so I'm just gonna pop that there burnish it and just remember, you don't have to adhere this down super duper strong because you're going to put it here and then you're going to put a piece of pattern paper over it. So you're gonna, it's going to lock in place and you don't need to worry too much about it moving. So that's why I'm okay um, using the score tape. So I went ahead and took it up and I'm just going to go ahead and put it down. Okay, so there it is. There's my magnet. So now I'm going to go ahead and cover this with the pattern paper. And as I stated earlier, this pattern paper is going to be five and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths. And I have that piece right here. These two papers were the next two on the pad from my last page. Um, I used the leftovers I had from the last page um, to make the all the different photo mats we're going to see later. So here we go. Let me just, you know, line it up before I get it, put the glue on to make sure that it's the right size. And it is. I've already inked the edges as well. So 
So again, I'm going to use ATG on this. Now, one thing you might want to do if you are scared about that magnet moving is just take a little bit of wet glue and just kind of circle the magnet. And that'll just make sure your paper sticks down really well um, around that magnet. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down. And sorry, my head's going to get in the way, but um, I just want to make sure that it gets really perfect. Okay. You know what, and I do love these super tiny magnets because it just, you barely feel it. It's right here. Okay. So now, before I put my deco paper back here, I want to fi affix the magnet right here. And this X is very approximate. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my other magnet and you just kind of drop it down and it really just snaps right there right it, it goes right to where it needs to be so you let it go and see let it let it go it'll go to where it needs to be now here's where it gets weird this is some really cheap um pigment ink white pigment ink and i just take a little bit of this dab it with my finger and then dab it on the magnet just enough to make the magnet there's a little bit of ink on there you can tell okay this works even better on black cardstock. Uh, that's why I started using the white pigment ink because most of my albums I do with black cardstock. So now I'm just gonna take this flap over, push down on that magnet, and see I'm left with a little white spot there. This is exactly where this magnet needs to go, right here. So now I know where to put my adhesive. So I'm gonna take again, uh, this is the half inch score tape. Um, you know, you probably could guess and get close to right, but that um, the thing with the pigment ink is so easy. So I'm just going to put this score tape right down over that little mark that I made. Um, peel it up. Okay. So I've pulled off the backing there. Now I just want to close this. So you're basically just going to let leave this, it's open score tape here. It's really sticky. I'm going to close this with my magnet here where it needs to be. Close it, push down gently to just make sure it sticks. And then gently pull it open. And it's stuck in the exact spot that it needs to be. So that's just what I have found to be the awesomest way to do that. So I'm now going to take my pattern paper and stick it down over here. So again, ATG on this guy. Okay. And then Hope my head doesn't get too far in the way. Perfect. There you go. You've got a great magnet closure going on there right now. Perfect. So I know it's a little weird, but that is my way of getting it perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Now we're going to take this piece. This is the eight and a half by five flap top piece that I've scored at a half inch on the sh on either short side and then a half inch on one long side okay and this is I've talked about this method a little earlier to make a pocket but I haven't actually done it with you yet um, but again we're just gonna glue I like to put the glue on the bottom first okay then you know what that's not enough I'm going to put a little bit more. Then fold these two pieces down and then line these two sides with glue as well. Okay. Um, this, uh, the reason I wanted to use this kind of pocket on this is because it was only four inches wide to begin with. And I wanted to make my photo mat pretty big. 
So I didn't want to lose too much space with the pocket. So now I'm just going to kind of smush it down. Oops, that got caught on the bottom. There we go. And again, you get that awesome like little wiggle room with the wet glue to make sure that you're lining it up perfectly. And there we go. Sweet. Okay. Awesome. So now we have this pocket on the top that's going to flip over. So, um, might as well go ahead and put this deco paper down on top of it. Already inked, all edges inked with that uh, Tim Holtz walnut stain. Again, I'm sorry, I know my head's getting in the way there, but I did just have a haircut, so you know. <laughs> okay, cool. We've got our pocket here. Um, the last thing we're going to do on the front, uh, our second to last thing, we've got our belly band here. It's an inch and a half by five, scored a half inch on either side to make the little flaps. Um, and you know what? First, I'm going to take my piece of pattern paper. And again, this is at one and three eighths by three and seven eighths. And um, I'm just going to glue this down. I'm going to use wet glue on this because it's so small. On these smaller pieces, I would either, I like to either use wet glue or just um, have a few small tape runners as well. Those little smaller disposable types. That's good. It's just too small of a piece to use your, my ATG accurately for me. Um, okay, so we have that. And now we on our little flaps, we're going to put the glue down on both of those. Okay. And then, and I'm just going to eyeball this. I don't want it exactly halfway. I'm going to put it a little below halfway because I want to put some tags in there and I don't know if the tags are going to be really quite tall enough. Okay. So there we go. We've got the belly band. Now I've got my little stopper to put on the bottom. This is a piece of chipboard. Um, it's an inch and a half by two. So um, I'm just going to take, you know, I really want to use my, this is just clogged up. Oh man, that's too bad. I love that glue. I'll have to figure out something else. Okay. So I'm going to glue this uh, pattern paper down onto the chipboard. I tried to cut this like a ticket, but the chipboard's just too thick. Um, for my little ticket punch. My corner rounder can actually handle um, the chipboard, and I did it in my last album. I rounded the corners, but it just didn't work on this. And then I'm going to take this piece of chipboard, and basically we're going to put it here, because what it's going to serve, when I put my tag in here, I'm going to use this this is going to serve as like a little stopper to stop the tag from falling out the bottom. So I'm going to leave basically all sides open and I just want to glue along this, just this bottom edge, right? So I'm going to put this here and again, I'm eyeballing the middle here and hold it down. And really, I want to really push this down for a while because I want to get a really specific grab in this one place. Okay. Great. So at this point, we're almost done. Um, I'm going to go away uh, for a little while um, and, and finish up. Basically, um, we have this page at 10 and a half by seven and three quarters. And we have scored this at three and a half and seven. Um, and then you do it trifold like this, like a brochure. 
And then after it was folded, then I did my ticket punch. Okay, so the whole thing looks like a big ticket. And when you fold it out, it looks, you know, kind of like how tickets come out. I don't know. I think it's cute. So we have that. And then we have six of these um, photo mats, also cut with the ticket punch. And these are three and three eighths by six and three quarters. Um, that was on my list. You know, I had it already on here. Three and three eighths by six and three quarters. You need six of those. So I've inked the edges, done the ticket punch. I'm going to put these papers on here. Um, I'm also going to make a few photo mats to go in here, and I'm also going to make a couple tags to go in here. And I'll be right back with the finished page. Okay, I am back, and I have our finished page here. So, uh, as you can see, uh, on the front here, we have a belly band. I have put two tags um, inside. I used these tag dies. They are a Tim Holtz um, Sizzix. Uh, it, it's a set of, of a lot of them, um, and I used these two. This is the largest two tags in the set. It's also where I got the little label die that I used as well. So I made those. I cut them out of craft cardstock and then um, also cut them out of decorative paper. And when you slide them behind here, you remember we put this little stopper here, so that stops. Out of this little flap too at the top, I pull our trifold um, photo mat where I put the um, pieces that I told you about up here, and then the little labels right down here. I just distressed these with some of that walnut stain distress ink. So it basically makes little captions um, and it's two-sided. So pretty cool, I think. And so that goes back in right here. Oops. It's a little futzy because you have to make sure, there we go, because of the trifold. The trifoldness. Um, and then this uh, is adhered with the magnet closure. Lift that over. And I've got a large on-page pocket here, and I just popped a 5 by 7 photo mat in there. Um, so it's a pretty cool page. Actually, I can put... Uh, no, I'll do it this way. Uh, it's a pretty cool page, functional, uh, lots of space for photos, especially once you count the trifold mat. Um, I, I'm sure I'll do some more embellishment at some point. Uh, probably stick some things here, uh, put some little 3 by 4 cards maybe find a cutout that I can pop here and then put some things in. But this is basically the page. Um, so that is page five of our mini albums. Remember the even numbered pages are just going to be regular pocket pages, so I'm not gonna show all of those. Um, but um, I hope you enjoyed this. And again, just wanna give credit, this is based on a Kathy Orta design. Um, so uh, enjoy, happy crafting, and I'll see you very soon for page seven. Bye.